Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're continuing on with our Symphony 4 contact form implementation. So we now have a nicely styled contact form and when we submit our form back we can get access to the data. So it would be nice now to turn this into an email that we can send and also maybe display a nice flash message to let the visitor know that the message was sent. So you may think this is cheating but I'm going to do a quick thing here that just says sending an email with Symphony. And we've got this, how to send an email with Symphony, and this is just the documentation. Uh, as it says at the top, Composer require mailer. Well, as I've said earlier in this series, if we were going about it with the Symphony skeleton, you would need to do that. But because we're using the website skeleton, this is already set up for us. And all we need is this piece on sending an email. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to get access to the Swift mailer, which we do by injection. Then we're going to create a new instance of a Swift message. We're going to fill in the various bits of data and then we're going to call send on that Swift mailer. So let's do just that. Let's get a copy of all that. We'll just paste that in. I'm not the biggest fan of typing, which is why I'd sort of, uh, I don't want to say cheated because well, that's how I would do it in the real world. I'd just refer back to the docs. I don't keep all this stuff in my head. And we also need to inject the Swift mailer. So we'll just call that mailer. And then when we're done, we want to, as it suggested, mailer send this message. Okay, so let's just start off by tidying this up. I'm just going to change this up to be you got mail. I'm going to set the from to be whoever sent the contact form in so we can get access to their email address because it's just an array. Now, for the to address, I'm going to use Mailinator, which is just going to give me a simple, usable mailbox. So here's the one that I'm going to use, punchy mistake, at Mailinator. Take a copy of that. In fact, I should probably take a copy of the whole thing because there's no way I'll be able to spell mailinator. Let's just pop this in. Of course, use your real email address. It's just for demonstration. Now for the body, I'm just going to take all of that out. I'm gonna, just going to send a text message here. I'm just going to have contact form, whatever we're sending as the message. And this is going to be of type text plain. Now we'll get a little bit more fancy with this and I'm well aware that we haven't used all the properties that we're sending back in, such as the date of birth or even the person's name at the moment. Now there's another piece in the docs where it tells us what we need to do. So it says using Gmail to send emails and we've got to go into our env file and update this. So I'm going to do that now in the env file. I'm going to take a copy of the example that it gives. I'm going to fill this in with my details. And that should be everything good to go. So long as we hit this page now with some valid data, then this should send. Valid data can be anything that matches the validation required. So I'll send that. And it's giving me an error. Okay, so it's telling me that I failed validation and that's to be expected. What you need to do now is open up your Gmail and fix this problem. You should have got an email. And as part of that email, you should be able to find the link that says enable less secure apps. Now, of course, this is purely for the purposes of demonstration. In the real world, you probably don't want to be sending emails via your personal Gmail account. But, you know, as I say, there are extra bits of documentation here to fill out to send via a more realistic provider. So I'm going to try sending that again. It's looking better this time. And there we go. Perfect. So whilst I'm not yet happy with the implementation that we've just added, I'm going to carry on regardless and we're going to come back to that. But the next step is we're going to get ourselves another quick win. So immediately after sending an email, I want to show the visitor a nice flash message to say, you know, that went well. We could even use some nice bootstrap styling to add an extra level of style to proceedings. So a flash message is what we're going to use. And a flash message is simply a one-time message that lasts for the duration of the current request. An example might be to show a failure message if the previous login attempt was unsuccessful or a success message if the user successfully updated the password. You shouldn't see this message every time they browse to a page, just the one time after they attempted a task, whether it succeeded or failed. So I've done a previous video on this and you can find that in the show notes. So we're going to go a bit quickly here. And whilst that video is for Symphony 3, this is basically the same for Symphony 4. So we're going to create a new template to store our flash message display block. So I'm going to create that empty template file and I'm just going to create it in the root of the templates directory. So I'm going to call it flash underscore messages .html.twig. Now I've already got this in my clipboard so I'm just going to paste that in. You can find this in the show notes. 
You can copy and paste this between any project that uses Bootstrap. And the really nice thing about this template is that it works generically for any of the available flash message levels. So like success and warning and error and so on. Now, just creating that template isn't enough. We will need to include it. And I'm going to include it just above the block main here. So it's going to be included on every page. But there's a nice thing about this in that because of the way that this template is set up, it will only actually render anything out if needed. And if there isn't anything, then nothing gets rendered. So you're not actually adding anything unless it's required. So to say include flash messages, HTML twig. And let's test this by setting up our first flash message. So I'm not going to bother with a form submission to test this out. I'm just going to add one in here that says add flash. And just before I do that, I just command and P on there just to show you what we need to pass in. So there's a type and a message. Both are required. The type is literally anything and so is the message. But as long as the type matches up with a bootstrap type, so in a bootstrap alert level, then you'll get some nice styling. So info is one. Again, there's a link in the show notes. So some info here, something like that. Let's just give this a refresh. And there we go. Now I can change that to be a success. And there we go. Looks quite nice. So I'll just leave it in and I'll also add a flash message in for when our message has been sent. Now this process could fail and we might still see this, the flash message. So yeah, be aware of that. That's just a hazard of our implementation at the moment. Just add in message was sent. Paste in any old nonsense. In fact, we'll just refresh it first so that you can see our sum info should always display. And this one should only ever display once we've sent it once. So our message was sent and then we refresh and that should disappear again. Okay, so things are looking nice, feeling nice overall, but this problem here is something that I want to address. So even though what we have here is working, I'm thinking this contact controller method is doing too much. We've got all the form handling, then the mailing and the flash messages, and that's before we've even worried about displaying a page. There is one other thing that I would suggest you do here. Once the form has been successfully submitted, I would do this redirect to root and just redirect back to the form itself or somewhere else. Typically you just redirect back to yourself, but that ensures that the form data will be cleared off. It's effectively a hard refresh and do remember to return this. Now the nice thing is, even though we used return this redirect to root and then redirected to the contact root and that causes a full page reload, our flash messages will still survive that and display as expected. So that's quite nice. So it might be nice to extract out the details of how we create this specific email and also how we send emails into a separate service. So knowing how to do this is really useful and it's something that you'll do a lot when working with Symfony. But we're starting to stray into murky waters here. So advice given here and in the best practices guidelines are completely dependent on the size and the scale of your project. If you're working on a small like five page largely static website, your requirements are going to be significantly different to those of say a large JSON API or a complex internal business system. Now, typically speaking, Symfony would be more likely used in those larger, more dynamic applications. So I'm going to steer towards the sort of approach that you may find in those bigger systems. But understand that the changes we're about to make in the next video are completely overkill for the size and complexity of this tutorial application, if this were our real application. But with that in mind, let's get on to the very next video.